What's up guys? Derek, moreplatesmoredates.com. Today we're going to be talking about sleep apnea. So um, I've had sleep apnea or diagnosed with sleep apnea since I was, uh, I think it was uh, six or seven years ago now. And uh, very, very overlooked thing in bodybuilding. And I actually did an article when I first started my website in 2016, early 2016. It was uh, the... What was it? The number one reason why bodybuilders are dropping dead or the real reason why bodybuilders are dropping dead or something like that. Did a video on it as well. Probably one of my least viewed and least read articles and videos ever just because no one cares about it because no one knows about it. No one knows. Uh, it's not interesting. But the reality is, is you should care if you're in bodybuilding because or if you're into bodybuilding because I think it's uh, one of the most overlooked cardiovascular risks there is um and it goes un like most people don't even know they have it most of the time or not most of the time a lot of the time so basically what it is if you don't know um sleep apnea is where you basically intermittently stop breathing in your sleep or apnea and you're basically restricting oxygen and killing yourself slowly every single night so when you body build you know you gain muscle and you gain size and that includes your neck so eventually if you get a big enough neck which is you know a lot of guys who body build and they gain a lot of weight when they bulk up or even once you get big enough where even when you're lean you have a big enough neck when you're lying down it can tend to kind of like restrict your airway when you're lying on your back and that's why you'll notice guys with sleep apnea a lot of the time if it's not a like a neurological like electric issue when I say electric I mean like brain signals can cause you to apnea as well if you have like just uh you know genetically but typically it's f like induced in bodybuilders through your actual structure of your neck so you'll notice guys with apnea sleep apnea a lot of the time when you're sitting up if you fall asleep sitting straight up you will not snore and you will not apnea and that is because your airway is open when you're, you know, your neck isn't collapsing into itself essentially. But when you're lying flat on your back, when you're in bed, your neck restricts your airway and it causes you to apnea in your sleep. And then if you couple that with the fact that, you know, most bodybuilders are way over the natural body weight. So their heart and lungs have to work way harder to supply more of all that oxygen to all that lean tissue because... Lean tissue takes more oxygen and blood to support than the same amount of mass in fat, which is often overlooked as well. And which is why guys who, you know, even if you're 200 and if you're 240 plus and you're shredded, you would think, oh, you know, I'm lean and I'm healthy. In reality, your work, your heart is working harder than it would be if you were 240 and fat as hell. So <laughs> you have to take this into consideration. And I've had sleep apnea for my whole life probably realistically, but, and a lot of it is, there's a few different factors that make mine worse than a typical case. One, I have a deviated septum, which I've never bothered to go get fixed. Um, I have a lot of extra, I didn't, I didn't get my tonsils removed as a kid and that's inhibiting my airway a bit as well. Um, you know, I often get asked in my videos, it sounds like I'm breathing heavy. And the reason is I can't really breathe through my nose. So basically I talk, and then I have to take a breath through my mouth. I can't just like, you know, like breathe as I talk through my nose really because my airway in my nose is like partially clogged 24 seven. So I have to, uh, in addition to that, I bodybuild and I weigh more than, you know, would be optimally healthy. Like realistically, regardless of what you think, weighing 220 plus, even if you're lean, is not healthier than if you were 170 lean it's just your heart has to work harder and it's gonna you know beat faster and you know work harder in general just to supply the proper amount of blood and oxygen to the that lean tissue and that's why you know you know marathon runners have like super amazing cardiovascular health and bodybuilders are dying at 40 and 50 so that's just in addition to you know drug use as well and you know couples with it but Sleep apnea is a huge thing and a lot of guys could prolong their life 
and increase their vitality severely, right? Is that the word? I don't know. Increase their vitality significantly if they diagnose their sleep apnea correctly. And basically what I did to diagnose it is my parents actually noticed when I was lying in bed that I would just start gasping for air. And obviously you're not going to be able to tell because you're sleeping and then you wake up and all you know is that for some reason you're way more tired throughout the day, even though you just slept eight hours. So you could be like dozing off in class, dozing off, you know, like at work, dozing off, doing anything pretty much the worse it gets. And it's because you never got into REM sleep when you were in bed. Even if you slept eight hours, it's the equivalent of like one hour. And your heart basically went through war that night and you didn't even know it because what happens is you'll just stop breathing and then your body will literally not breathe for like a minute straight. And then your body forces you to not die and forces you to gasp for air. And you do this over and over and over again all night long, depending on how severe it is. But the really severe cases like mine, I would literally just like stop breathing for a minute, minute and a half almost. And then just be like... And just like gasp for air and then repeat. And it would happen hundreds of times a night. So I actually, uh, I saw a sleep specialist. I forget what type of doctor they're called, but it's like, I highly recommend if you bodybuild and you, even if you snore a little bit, go see a sleep specialist and get, you know, a study done to see if you have it or not. And you'd probably benefit from a CPAP machine anyways. The reason I'm putting this video here is because I feel like if it's titled with the vertical diet, it might get seen more and it's a big recommendation in the vertical diet and it's rightfully so, but a lot of guys don't know what it is. So I'm hoping I can bring more attention to it myself because I'm a direct, uh, I have a lot of experience with it. I've had a CPAP machine for six years now since I was diagnosed and it's helped immensely. So like basically you get the sleep study done and Realistically, even if you're above average in muscle musculature, you probably have some degree of lack of proper oxygen while you're sleeping. And, you know, you'll realize as you bulk up, your snoring gets worse. And it's not a coincidence. It's because you're literally having more issues breathing. So basically what happened was mine was getting so severe. And the reason I, it got so severe was I was doing like a dirty bulk to like 260 or 250 at the time. And it just got so bad that I'd sleep a full night's sleep and then I'd fall asleep um, in class. I even fell asleep at the club once, just like sitting at a table. I was just sitting there and just being stationary for more than like 30 seconds. I started passing out. So um, got it diagnosed, got a uh, CPAP machine. The thing you have to realize, it's so, so bad when you deprive yourself of oxygen while you're sleeping like that, that... Once it's like try holding your breath for as long as you can and then gasping for air when you run out. That's like what you're doing constantly. So basically you're cutting off oxygen to your brain. First of all, you're killing brain cells every night. Second of all, your heart goes into overdrive as it freaks out and it's trying to like get everything going and try and push oxygen and blood around and you're not providing that oxygen. So basically your heart will go like racing back and forth all night. Your blood pressure goes crazy you uh it's an insane cardiovascular stress and it leads to high blood pressure you know cardiovascular disease it leads to heart enlargement left ventricular hypertrophy everything in the book so i was told by my sleep specialist he said if you if i didn't get a cpap machine when i did i would have had a stroke by the time i was 30 so just you know you can just see how severe that is and these guys, a CPAP machine isn't necessarily comfortable when you first start. This is something you have to realize too and just deal with. I had a full face mask because my the nose one, I can't even really breathe through my nose. So the nose one just doesn't work. I need to use the full face one. And uh, um, if you're a mouth breather, definitely get the full face one. Um, the first three months, at least, I'd wake up and the mask would be like, across my room on the other side of the room and it would be because in my sleep it was so uncomfortable that i'd like rip it off and chuck it across the room without even knowing it i just wake up and i'd be like where's the thing and it would be like you know halfway across my room and i do that all the time and 
it wasn't on purpose, but it was just a process of getting used to it. You have to make sure you get an automated one, one that adjusts to your oxygen needs as you sleep. You can't just get one that's like a, a static amount of pressure. You need one that auto adjusts to what you need at the time. So the best CPAP machines, the automatic ones, they will basically, you have like a state, you have a, you know, like a set amount that it starts at, but once you fall asleep, it automatically adjusts to what you need. And if you need a higher pressure when you first start, you can, you know, adjust the baseline, you know, reading. So it never goes below that. And that's what I had to do because I had, you know, such an inhibited airway. So yeah, but it's like, it literally saved me. So highly recommend you get one. If uh, in Canada, it's uh, covered by insurance, but, uh, or at least private healthcare insurance, not just like normal medical services plan in the States. I don't really know. I'm sure it's quite a process of getting one. Thing you need to know, these sleep clinics that will try and sell you their CPAP machines, they're so overpriced and marked up. If you don't have insurance that fully covers it, do not buy it there. Like seriously, you, they cost like out of pocket, they will charge like two to $3,000. And then you can go home and go on your computer and type in that same model on Amazon and find it for like 500 bucks. Or if you go on, you know, like Craigslist or eBay or whatever, you can probably find the same one barely even used or maybe even brand new from somebody else for like a few hundred bucks. So if you don't have insurance, just buy one somewhere, just find it and get one. That's my best recommendation. If it's covered by insurance, get one ASAP. Even if it's like a process to get one where it's like you have a huge waiting period for your insurance to cover it or something like that. Let's just buy one. Like seriously, it's not, it's so, so unhealthy that I think anyone who has above average musculature and weighs like a significantly amount, significant amount more than they should, should have one. Cause I can almost guarantee you're having some level of inhibition of your breathing while you're sleeping. So anyways, hopefully that helps some guys. Hopefully more people see this one than the last one. Cause the last one didn't get much attention <laughs> and it should, it was like the most important article I've ever written or at least one of them. But, uh, anyways, that's a quick, uh, sleep apnea update, not update, but you know, some info for you from somebody who had, has extremely severe sleep apnea and deals with it with a CPAP machine. So, um, it's recommended in the vertical diet. I recommend it too. So definitely get one anyways. Um, I'm actually gonna link the one I use down below. Um, I'll see if there's a current link on Amazon. If there's not, just try and find, I like the Respironix Dream Station ones are the ones I use. I don't know if uh, you'll be able to find that on Craigslist or on eBay or wherever, but let's try and find it at the cheapest place and get one. Like you don't wanna hold off on something like this, trust me. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, um, drop a like. I think I just said that, Never mind. Uh, hit that notification bell if you want to get updated when I post new videos. I guess uh, YouTube won't show them to you unless you hit the bell as well, even if you're subscribed. So I don't know 100% how it works, but subscribe, hit the bell. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.